The transition to electric vehicles isn't just about cars. It's about vans too. Welcome to the Faster Project. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can I, please, can I drive? No, nope. please. Planet Earth is in trouble, and we need to transition to sustainable transport faster. So today, myself, Rick Bullermere, and leading battery electrochemist, Dr. Ewan McTurk, are checking out the all-electric Vivaro E. Price, £35,790 in the UK, excluding VAT, or €41,495 in Ireland. Note that in Ireland, there's the SEAI grant that's applicable to some qualifying businesses towards the cost of this vehicle. Battery, 50 or 75 kilowatt hour variants available. That'll get you 110 to 150 miles per charge, 176 to 240 kilometers. Performance, a 100 kilowatt motor with 260 newton meters of torque gets this van from not to 60 miles an hour in between 13.1 and 14.3 seconds. Payload, 1,226 kilos for the 50 kilowatt hour battery, 1,002 kilos for the 75 kilowatt hour battery, between 5.3 and 6.6 .6 cubic meters of storage space, and it can tow a ton. Charging, a 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger is standard with an 11 kilowatt optional upgrade, and a 100 kilowatt CCS rapid charging. Oh, there's a 12 volt socket there, that's quite handy. Okay, we can't do a van review without Paul Van Man, the Van Man. It's not your full full title, is it, Paul? But thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Rick. And uh, you and great to see you both. Great to see you inside a van. Wow. It's nice. It's very spacious. It has a mirror uh, right here. I'm not sure why, because... <laughs> Straight onto the belt here. Yeah. <laughs> But Paul, a, a quick one, because you do know an awful lot about vans. Uh, I know you're about to do the EV Cafe shortly, but tell us a little bit your thoughts about the uh, e Vivaro. Well, the e Vivaro is a, a cracking vehicle. It's really the first vehicle that came to market that really got mass uh, acceptance. And so, you know, big companies like BT, British Gas, Centrica, they're actually looking here at the AFP conference right now about this. Uh, deployment of e Vivaro, it's, it's got a lot of acceptance, mainly because it's got a decent range, good size battery, which is reasonably efficient, so it seems, but also charging, the ability to charge at quite high speeds, up to 100 kilowatts on that vehicle. Um, it means that it's good for the day-to-day -day operation, it gives you a good boost in the daytime. Right, Ewan. Welcome to the what van, small van or medium van? Medium van of the medium year. Medium van of the year. 2022. It still uses one of these. How novel. Yeah. Back it in there. Let's put it into drive. Let's put foot, it into drive. Foot, foot on the brake. Foot's on the brake. Oh no, you need to do the ignition ah, just like an old car. Yeah, do it yeah. twice. A vintage petrol car. Oh, into go. D for drive. Let's go. Oh. I mean, that oh, is. It's, it's a bit heavier than the cars we've been driving of late. From the passenger perspective, I'll tell you what, it's nippier than I thought it would be. It's a, a very confident machine to drive around town and out on the motorway from the looks of it so far. And that is a good point. When you're driving, in, if you've driven a transit van before, and you're going through the gears and you're driving around town, you're stopping and starting. By the end of the day, you're knackered. And I think, you know, the same with all electric vehicles, this is just easy to drive and effortless. Oh, it really is, yeah. I mean, you've got your gear selector kind of flicky switch uh, down in the center console and and that's it and then as you say just point and squirt you know it's just yeah pretty much one foot driving if you want and you know, okay this is the entry level trim this is the, the dynamic trim so it does have some useful features like the reversing sensors you discovered earlier but um, it doesn't have a reversing camera and reversing cameras are pretty cheap these days for the manufacturer to put in so I do feel a bit shortchanged by that but the Elite spec does have that, does have a sat-nav, which this doesn't. You know, this is 
This is very basic trim by EV standards these days, but then again, sometimes you just want a box on wheels that does what you need it to, and this is it, and this will last probably hundreds of thousands of miles with very little to go wrong. You've also got payload options of, of 1,000 kilos or 1,200 kilos. If you go for the 1,200 kilos, you have to go for a smaller battery, which is the trade-off, right? You get range, uh, but less payload, and payload, but less range. So this is the trade-off that we've got with electric vans. And if that's not enough, I believe it can tow as well. About a ton, is it, it can do? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the reality is the towing is a token gesture, really, towards towing, because typically vans in this sector can tow around two tons, um, and that is broadly what's needed. But, you know, if you're towing small amounts of weight, like, uh, you know, a generator or a, a small trailer with some light weight on the back, it's, it's better than nothing, and a lot of the manufacturers actually just say nothing you know so it's um it's the best way to to go yeah you mentioned a couple of things that you don't like about it like the the point that we've got a, a rear view mirror here and nothing to to look through i couldn't find any cup holders earlier i was like where's the cup holders you know you're in a van you're gonna have at least 20 to 25 cups at any one time uh during a during a project but i found it it's down the front here but i'd still like a few more cup holders Door bins are good, massive door bins. Oh yeah, huge, definitely. And loads of room in the back. Well, I mean, this has got 5.3 cubic meters of storage space, which is the it's the L1 trim, which is the, the smaller size of van, which is still pretty big, you know, kind of transit-esque in size. And there's the L2, which is a longer wheelbase. That gives you 6.6 .6 cubic meters of storage space. And if you get the Elite trim, which has the flex cargo, flex cargo, I should say, bulkhead, which allows you to flip down a flap and then put like big planks or whatever construction materials you have through it, you can get about 3.6 meters, I think, of uh, off the top of my head anyway, of of length of material in the back of that van slash where my head is right now. So yeah, really versatile van. For sure. I mean, diesel costs a fortune these days. Mm. A fifth of the UK's diesel comes from Russia as well, so mm. no reason not to get it. Um, and on top of that, there's just well, obviously the pollution as well, because you've got the nanoparticulates that come off of exhausts at child height, and it concentrates at that kind of low level in, in, your, in an urban environment. A quick one before we let you go and uh, get ready for the EV Cafe show. Um, why is it important that we have electric commercial vehicles like this? Well, the, the reality is, Rick, um, that we've got uh, the towns and cities of our nation are at illegal levels of pollution all over the country. Um, and, you know, whilst the vans are 16% of the traffic, they are 32% of the emissions in the towns and cities. So air quality is at the heart of why we should do this. Of course, of course, we've got the climate emergency, but that feels a little bit more boring in the back ground that actually people's lives being affected genuinely by the quality of air and we can do something today about that with deploying electric vans and trucks actually going up into the heavier sectors but vans are really important because there's a lot of numbers and also it really um, spreads the message across companies that electric vehicles really are absolutely brilliant to drive especially in comparison to their ICE counterparts, their internal combustion engine counterparts. So that's the primary reason, um, and it's better for drivers. Drivers have a much easier life driving an electric van than they do a diesel van. So for those two reasons, air quality and driver friendliness, I would say, go electric. Nice. So out of 10, what would you give it? I would say, a, you know, for the want of that uh, reversing camera, nine. nine. That's about the only thing that I can see wrong with it. That's, yeah. a, that's high. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've seen the that's Nissan. Very high. It is. I mean, the, I've, I've seen the Nissan ENV 200. That was basically the go-to electric van until this came along, and it wasn't as well designed, but it was still incredibly reliable, incredibly robust. British Gas ran the ENV 200 for seven years, and they had basically no mechanical faults to report, which is definitely not the case for the diesel equivalents that they ran as well. And it's quite telling that they've been ordering this van by the thousands. That's that's telling. Yep. Well, there we go. So if you're looking to get into an electric van, uh, we hope this has been useful and it's given you a bit of a, uh, an overview of, of how and why you should get a, a, an electric van. 
and uh, thanks for watching The Faster Project. Stay tuned for more electric adventures. This project has been supported through the European Union's Interreg 5A programme.